Hello, investors and traders, and welcome to the Weekly Market Report. I'm A.J. Monte, and this is a one-year daily candle chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, ticker symbol DIA. And if you are one of our regular followers, you'll know that I keep my lines on the chart each and every week from the previous report so we can see how the forecast worked out. And last week, I drew this, what I call zip line here. It's just an angle of what I'm forecasting in the trend. And the high target on that was 325.70. Now remember, that was drawn last Friday. And early in the week, we hit that target right away and then pulled back from that. Now, one of the main reasons it pulled back from this line right here at my target price is because formerly that was a support level back here that held as support here. It quickly turned to resistance here, and this week it held as resistance. So now we have that roll reversal resistance line still in place. It's still in force. But notice how the 20 period moving average, which is this blue line here, is matching up right with that roll reversal. And so I could lower my forecast a bit, but what I'm going to do, because I think that the markets are going to rally next week, just like we did this week, I'm going to leave that target right in place. I think we're going right back up to test that resistance line once again, so that 325.70 level right there is still, again, a second target two weeks in a row. Now, one very interesting thing that I want to point out to everyone and why there, it's so important to wait until the last 15 minutes of the day or the last hour of the trading session is that for the most part, the, the trading activity today left us with a bearish engulfing candle. When we were on the lows today, this was a massive bearish engulfing candle. And right towards the end of the day, as you look at the minute by minute chart here, we rallied up with force right from these lows, right around the, the two o'clock level, one, 132 o'clock, we just rallied with force. Now, that's a combination of what I believe is short covering, a short covering rally. Those who are short are closing their positions and causing that to go up with new buy on the bounce kind of folks, you know, the bottom fishers. Now, again, next week, I think while we'll see a rally, I am still very much a long-term bear. I have not changed that whatsoever. And keep that in mind because you have to really be careful in this market with any new long positions. We option traders who are set up for a bear market are doing very well. This is a great week for all of us who are trading the put spreads especially. Was set up with what's called negative delta. So that a negative delta option position favors a downside in the market. Now, in addition to that hammer pattern, if you're following along with my trading checklist, I look at the candle, I look at the volume, and then I look at the oscillators. You can see down here that we have a positive divergence in the stochastics. We have a higher low on stochastics while the price was going to a new lower low today. And the same thing with the CCI. We see a stretch here of higher lows while the price action was going to much lower lows. So that is known as a positive divergence, again, supporting or confirming what I believe is going to be a bounce for next week. Now, I'm going to hop right to the VIX because if you recall, I made that guarantee once again that the gaps on the VIX close 100% of the time, and I gave that guarantee. And what happened is right after I gave the market report, we gapped down after last Friday's market report. So we had a double gap to the upside. Now, for those clients of ours who are on the weekly calls with me, I gave them a double guarantee. I said, both of these gaps will fill. And I staked my reputation on that as usual. And it's almost funny because the VIX is is an oscillating index. It's not a stock. So it's a high probability, 100% in my book, of those filling. Well, yesterday, that gap filled. Today, what happened? We had a lower high, lower low. So we had that little bit of a reversal after the gap filled. And then what happened is we have this downward move in the CCI down here. See, we failed to cross over that zero line. So the CCI is probably going to go a little bit lower next week as the markets go higher. But then look where we are on the calendar right here. See this? This is a cycle low. And I know this video might be a little bit longer 
and I try to keep it around eight to 10 minutes, but this is extremely important. If you look at the cycle lows, and we had one of our viewers ask about that, what indicator I'm using on Thinkorswim, it's the cycle lines. And if you're using Thinkorswim, it's found in the drawings up here. So you click on the drawing tab, go to drawing tools, and it's all the way to the bottom right column right there. It's cycle brackets. All right, so I have those cycle brackets in place and I have not moved those. And if you look again, looking at history over the past year and even three years, every time the VIX has gotten to a cycle low, it's rallied. If you had bought the VIX or anything that follows the VIX, you would have done very well, especially in the last cycle low. Now, where are we right here? Well, we are again approaching a cycle low. So next week, I think the VIX is going to drop a little bit more and then bounce. I'm just going to redraw those lines though because I want to make them a lot clearer. So I'm going to zoom in here and tell you that we're probably going to go right back down to this level, maybe not as low as the support level, but I'm putting a forecast on the VIX down at 2701. And then I think we're going right back up. These forecasts back here were hit, but there's one that I really want to keep on the charts. And that's my longer term forecast. I've had this in place for a while. I keep talking about it every week. That 4188 right there has not moved since I put it in place. And I believe not only are we going to hit that, but I think we're going to blow through that. And I'm not going to give you that longer term forecast just yet until we break out of the 4188 high right there. So that's still in place. So again, very short term pullback on the VIX 2701. Remember, we have this roll reversal down here, form of resistance, which was broken here, held the support here and here. I think it's going to hold for a third time before, again, that eventual bounce. And that's the VIX. So for you option traders, you, I just gave you a little bit of a tool that will help you manage your risk accordingly as well. So let's go right to the SPY. SPY had the rally early in the week, and it did not get all the way up to that level. This is one that I mentioned last night to our equity oracle traders that I am I gave them a little bit of a sneak preview because they have classes with me on Thursday, but I said I'm not moving my target. I'm going to carry that upside target into this week and next week, and that's where it's staying. So SPY, because of that beautiful hammer pattern down there, 41651 is still in place, and again, look down below. You have that positive divergence. Lower lows on price, higher lows on the CCI. So that is the spiders we're keeping that in place. The same thing for IWM, keeping that target in place. That's a lower target at 185.98. Again, look at that beautiful textbook hammer pattern. You got a mixed batch here on the oscillators. But remember, I go with... The price and volume first because those trump the oscillators. They're most important. They carry more weight. Yesterday, we had an inverted hammer on lower volume. That tells us the sellers are losing some of that momentum. Today on the hammer pattern, we had an increase. That's a bullish sign. So again, nothing changing there. 185.98. Now, if we look at the Qs, take some QQQ. Another hammer pattern, it's following right across the board right here. Same thing, drop in volume yesterday on the way down. Oscillate is still kind of fluctuating here, but that hammer pattern is bullish. This one, I'm going to lower the price target a bit. Why? Because this, the moving average is now trending and accelerating to the downside. So that moving average is going to couple up with this high here. And so I'm being conservative on that one with a higher price target on the Qs at 303.85. In a bear market, it's not uncommon to see the lower highs coming in and the bounces not following through as much as they would in a bull market. So I'm expecting just a very slight and short-lived bear market rally and then right back down again. So this becomes the new resistance level for at least next week on the queues, and then I'll adjust next week during the report. Now, I'm going to wrap up because some people are asking me for Ethereum and Coinbase and all the others. I talked about 
the weekly candles on the cycle here, you can see that we're right at a cycle low. Now, for Ethereum, I'm not going bullish on you here. I'm just telling you that slightly bullish indications are popping up here because we have a drop in volume on the weekly and there's still a gap above the market. And unlike the other indices, this is showing a pivot on the CCI. And that is telling us that the momentum is starting to shift. Now, again, go back and listen to the recording and what I said on Ethereum. I said, if you are planning on buying anywhere in this area, you have to set stops. And your stop loss level is going to be right in this area, somewhere below support. If you want to go a little bit lower, you have to put stops in because this is not a market to be fooling around in. You have to be using good risk management principles to make these trades. Otherwise, you could suffer a catastrophic loss if you hold on to these losses too long. Before I wrap up, I want to mention something to you. Month after month after month, I've been telling people to keep your eyes off of Ukraine and focus very intently on what's happening in China. And many of you or most of you know that I'm a U.S. veteran. I spend a lot of time in the Navy on three different carrier groups. And in fact, the USS Nimitz is a carrier group that I was a part of back when I was active. And I was on the USS America and on the USS John F. Kennedy, CV-67. This is a fairly recent representation of where the carrier groups are positioned as of March. Now, the Navy is not obviously going to tell you where the carriers are dynamically here in, in a satellite image. But I want to focus your attention right here on the Harry S. Truman. They're sitting in the Mediterranean, not far from Cyprus right here. And if they make a move, if they bring this carrier group through the Suez Canal right here and into the Red Sea and eventually into the Indian Ocean right here, that means something is getting ready to, to happen here. They already have five carrier groups deployed. Now, March, even though this might seem like an old report, these carrier groups generally stay at sea for about nine months. So they're not at the end of their deployment here. If they bring that Truman through the Suez Canal, and this is a big event because they'll bring the whole carrier group through there. That's what CSG stands for, Carrier Strike Group. This is the destroyers, the guided missile cruisers, the submarines, the tenders, the supply ships, the refuelers, you name it. They are all coming through. So it's a, it, they're not going to just casually, oh, let's bring the whole carrier group through the Suez Canal. This would be a big event. And I think the markets would react to that once that is known by the general public. I'm just pointing that out to you right now as a, as a point on your radar to keep an eye on that. And if you see any kind of military action into the Indian Ocean, you got to understand these carrier groups are already within striking distance of Taiwan. And there is also a Chinese carrier group out there with the American forces. So it's getting pretty tense there. And I don't believe that the market is going to appreciate that in, on a bullish side, at least, if that news is announced that the Truman is coming through the Suez. So, again, keep your stops in place. Thank you so much. I have to once again thank you. We hit another record on our weekly market report. Evidently, I found something out. There's a lot of people that are using the word excellent and helpful. I did not know that when you comment with words like that, it throws us into the menu because the algorithm recognizes our words. That's kind of scary, right? That artificial intelligence. But because of you, because of your comments, because of your sharing and your liking this video, it's getting out there. And whether you know it or not, indirectly, you're helping a lot of other people stay focused on the charts. And if they're using that as a risk management tool, then guess what? We all become ambassadors to the technical charts. So again, thank you. Have a great weekend and we'll talk to you soon. So long.